Okay, so in this video, this is the project that I want to do next. This is my third bedroom. And what I want to do on this green wall is build some display shelves and they'll go to the ceiling and I'll trim them out with moldings and make them look nice and solid. And I will show you how I do it. Okay, so what I bought is long pine boards they're seven and a quarter inches wide. I got four of the six foot lens and two of the four foot lens. These boards will be to make the two shelves going across the width of the room, which is 10 and a half feet. And then these boards I'll use to make maybe three segments going across the width. I'll figure it out as I go. <laughs> and these are the brackets. They're very heavy and really nice. I got them on Amazon. They fit this size board exactly perfectly. And they came in this set of eight. So what I need to do now is move the contents of this room. I need to clear off this wall. So anyway, I always use these uh, slidey pads when I'm moving heavy furniture on my floors. And thank goodness, I have never gotten a scratch on these floors or these floors. Uh, going over the threshold is a little tricky for heavier furniture. And I just kind of rock it back and forth and try to get the slidey thing to slide underneath the legs as I go over the threshold, but you know, it's always a juggling act <laughs> getting over the thresholds. Luckily, this room did not have any threshold, so I could just slide it straight in. Okay, so I did some measurements of things that I might want to put on these shelves, and I have some short vases that are about eight and a quarter, eight and a half inches high. And then I have a couple vases that are about 11 and a quarter high. So I figured that I would make the top shelf have a clearance of about nine inches, and then the bottom shelf have a clearance of about 13 inches. And I like that that doesn't take up much of the height of this room. On this graph paper, each square represents six inches, so two squares to a foot. This is the nine foot high wall, and then ten and a half feet wide. I like this because I want to be able to hang paintings and prints below this wall unit, and then put a desk underneath, or if I ever decide to use this room as a bedroom, I would have room for a headboard then. I also like these measurements because I bought those two four foot long boards to use for the vertical pieces, so I'll have enough wood then. Okay, so I got this stud finder on Amazon. And this will be the first time I'm trying it. Uh, just so I don't have to get up on the ladder, I'm just going to do it at this height. Okay, so it shows you exactly where the studs are. That's pretty nice. I'll mark the middle. 
and then I'll transfer the lines up to where I need to put the brackets. This is pretty nice. Okay, so I marked the studs all the way across, and then I transferred my lines up to where I'll be putting the brackets for the two shelves. So now, I don't have a laser line. That's the new way to do it. That's the easier way to do it. I don't have one of those, so I'm gonna use the old fashioned way, which is to use a level. I have a mark here, nine inches down for my first shelf bracket and 22 inches down for the second shelf bracket. So now I need to make sure this is level to the next place where I want to put the other bracket. And here's the mark for the stud here, and I'll just put an X where it will be level with this one over here. Okay, so measuring before you put any holes in the wall is very important, of course, because I have two different boards that have to line up exactly in the middle and they have to be level with each other too. And the reason why you can't measure down from the ceiling is because sometimes that might not be level. So this first bracket is spaced a little bit more than 14 inches from the side, 32 inches uh, skipping one of the studs. Each stud is 16 inch on center. That's the typical building code. So there's a stud here. There's actually a stud here, 16 inches away, center to center. I'm just using every second stud. So from here to the next one, is 32 inches on center, skipping this stud, 32 inches from that one, this will be in my uh, second board, skipping this stud, and then 32 inches from there on center. And this one ended up being a little closer to 15 and a half inches from the wall. So I made sure that my markings for my bracket holes are exactly lined up vertically and they're level from bracket to bracket all the way across. Okay, I got the first two brackets in. I ended up having to make bigger pilot holes with a, uh, a bigger uh, drill bit. I first started out with the 7 64ths drill bit. It wasn't enough. So I bumped it up to a 5 32nd drill bit. And in addition to that, I rubbed the screws on a bar of soap, getting some of the soap onto the threads. And the combination of those two made it way easier to screw these screws into the stud. Okay, so now before I put the shelves up, I'm going to check with the level to see if these brackets are level. Oh my gosh, this is the moment of truth. Okay, good news. It's time now to pause and reflect. <laughs> As I look at the shelves this morning, I'm not so happy with the proportions. The top shelf is appearing to be too tight and uh, the bottom shelf is fine, the height of the bottom shelf, but the items on the top, you can't really see them so well up there. I'm wondering if after I have everything together with moldings and paint everything white with the vertical divisions, that it might look okay. I measured and the top height is 9 inches the way I had figured it would be, 
but the height of the bottom shelf, the clearance, is about 12 and a quarter, 12 and a half. I had intended it to be 13. So I think my math, I didn't account for the fact that the screw hole is about an inch up from the bottom of the bracket. I think that was where I made the mistake. So I might make a little change. I don't want to move all of the brackets, that's for sure. What I might do is remove the top brackets and move them down about an inch and that will make the clearance of the top shelf 10 inches and the clearance of the bottom shelf like 11 and a quarter, which I think will be fine. Those tall vases will still fit on the bottom shelf. I removed the top brackets and move them down a little more than three quarters of an inch. So these two boards, I just put them here to show you the heights. And I measured them and I'm happier now with these heights. And this is the way it's going to stay and I will deal with whatever I end up with. So what I'm going to do next is cut the two six foot long boards and I'll join them in the middle with some adhesive. This is my setup. These are just regular plastic sawhorse legs you can buy at uh, you know the home improvement store. And then I had made this tabletop out of two pine boards. I glued them together and then I put a trim board on the front and back to keep them together. And then I just whitewashed them and I used them on top of these cabinets. So anyway, it makes a nice saw table. <laughs> just if you're interested, this is my saw. I've had this for a long time and it's always worked great for me. It's a pretty simple one and it was inexpensive too. And it just does whatever home improvement projects I've needed it for. So I have my tools ready that I might need for this. Another thing I did was to cover my furnace register here. And I put a towel in front of the door so that the wood dust doesn't get out of this room. So let me get started on cutting these boards. Okay, so that went pretty well. I'm only doing one long board at a time to make sure that there aren't any mistakes before I do the second one. So what I did was I measured five feet, three inches, and I cut just short of that so that the boards didn't get too long to fit in the 10 foot, six inch width of the wall. I glued them together with that construction glue. I'll let this dry and then I'll do the second one. And in the meantime, I will vacuum because this wood dust is actually very slippery. Okay, so good morning. And my method of gluing the two boards end to end didn't work. Okay, so this liquid nails didn't dry. I left it to dry for a few hours and it didn't dry and it didn't hold the two lengths of boards together. So 
I'm going to try a different one, a different method. For those of you who aren't familiar with caulking guns, you have to release this trigger here and pull it out. And then you take the old tube out. And I'm going to try this Loctite Power Grab Heavy Duty. So you just have to cut a piece off of the tip here. And I'm just using a utility knife. And I just press down on it and roll the tip around, pressing down. And you also have to break a seal that is right down here. So I use a small screwdriver and just press it down in there. And I make sure I have some glue on the end and that means it broke the seal. So in the caulking gun, load the bottom in first, then the top, and then just squeeze the trigger. And this will push the bottom up in the tube and then you can start squeezing the adhesive out. There it comes. So you can see that the adhesive keeps coming out because there's pressure still on the bottom of this tube. So to release it, just press this again and pull back on that lever. So that will relieve the pressure. So this is the way you do any of these tubes, like caulking too, works the same way. Okay, so you might be thinking, well, I'm making so many mistakes. <laughs> but I want to share my methods that I'm using, and some of them will work and some won't. And so you have to figure out a different way of doing things, plan B. So what I'm going to do is screw one board up on the top two brackets and then apply glue to the end and put the other one up against it and then screw that one in so that they'll be in place. I'll line them up and I'll be able to put a vice grip on the one side and just let it dry that way. Okay, so I made another design change. I decided to put one vertical piece just right in the middle. In addition to that construction glue, I looked in my arsenal and I found this tight bond wood glue. I also pulled out this wood filler and I applied it in between the two shelves in the middle. I'll just let that dry and then I can sand it down. I might have to put another layer on it and then I'll sand it down and then when I paint, you uh, won't see that crease in between the two lengths of boards as much. And here's a close up of that wood filler in between the two lengths of boards. I also added a few small nails. And it's good to have different lengths of levels because these are short pieces. So I needed a fairly short level to make sure that they were vertically upright. And whenever I'm using these products, glues, wood filler, caulking, I try to always remember to wear a glove so I don't get it right on my skin. Okay, so I have all the vertical pieces in. I just had to cut and recut some of the pieces to make sure that when I put them in that the shelves were still level. That's the reason I have this end propped up and this end I don't have propped up because on this end, 
that very right side of the bottom shelf was sagging down a little too low, making it not level. So that's why I had to nail it up to the upright piece and then prop it up until all the glue dried. And it was the opposite for this side. The very left side of that lower board was a little too high, making it not level. So when I inserted the vertical piece, the vertical piece is actually pushing it down enough to make the shelf level. Okay, so I'm going to have a lot of moldings to add and there will also be a molding at the very top to make it look like the top of the shelf unit. And in case you don't know, caulking is your best friend in projects like this because the caulking will fill in any gaps and you would have a really hard time then once it's all painted to be able to see any imperfections at that point. Today I'm going to the Home Improvement Center to get moldings to finish up this project. Okay, so I think I got my steps in for today. I'm not going to film all of this, but you see the selection I have? <laughs> I just love this store. Okay, so what I got, 10 moldings, and I had two that I had bought before. These 10 moldings today, eight of them are the vinyl ones and only these two smallest ones are pine wood. Let's see what I can do with these moldings. If I don't use any of these moldings, I'll return them, and then I'll be able to see if I need anything else to finish up this job. Another alternative is that I could have just left the wood unpainted with the bracket showing, but that's not the look I wanted. I did want it to be all white so that the items I display on these shelves will stand out more. And this is a creative process for me when I do projects like this. So I always make changes when I'm in the middle of it based on the results I'm getting so far. And I always seem to like it in the end. Okay, I just came back from another trip to the Home Improvement Center. I did buy a new ladder, a taller one. This one is a six foot ladder. My other one was five feet. I also bought these wood six foot lengths of, they said one by two inches, but the dimension of it is actually three quarters by one and a half. I want to add a strip of wood underneath this bottom shelf. I think I will add just a thin strip of molding to the fronts of these vertical pieces and I'll also fill in the gaps with spacers. I bought these 12 inch strips of balsa wood. They're quarter by quarter inch. Okay, the first part of the moldings is finished and I like it. What I did was nail the strips of wood that are this dimension. They're three quarters by one and a half inches high. I nailed those right underneath the shelf. I nailed them to the studs. And then in the gap, I glued this molding underneath the shelves. And I think it looks good. Okay, so I got the pine boards and pine molding applied to the top of the shelf unit. They're up against the ceiling. I glued everything and I also put one nail in the boards on those vertical pieces. 
And now I'm starting to put that thin pine molding underneath that top shelf that will be filling in the gap between the shelf and the wall. Okay, so just to show you that all of my boards didn't go on all lined up and everything is not perfect <laughs> and that's okay. I wanted to show you that I just improvise and I put a little spacer piece down here with that balsa wood and up here just enough to make it uh, vertically level. I don't know if that's the correct term, but it is straight up and down vertically. So visually it won't look off. I filled in some of the gaps with that construction adhesive and I'll let all of that dry. And then when everything is dry, I'll just put some spacers in here with the balsa wood just so I don't have to fill in all of that with caulking. And then add the caulking, like I'm always saying, caulking is a lifesaver. <laughs> Same with this side. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination by professional standards. And the important thing is that it looks vertical. And this is good. Okay, so I got the caulking on. Okay, so I totaled up my costs for this project. The glues that I used were $20.44. The tight bonds, I have a lot left, so I'll be using those on other projects. The two four foot long boards that I used for the upright pieces were $20.78. The four six foot length boards that I used for the shelves were $51.16. There were five pine wood moldings. Those were $26.90. There were four of those three quarter inch by one and a half inch by six foot long wood strips. I used those for the very top of the shelf unit and underneath the bottom shelves. Those were $12.56. There was one eight foot vinyl molding. It was $4.98. And I bought that 60 pack of the quarter inch by quarter inch balsa wood strips for filling in gaps. I only used maybe 10 of them, but I included the entire cost, which was $11. And then the eight pack brackets. Those were $27.80. One tube of caulking, $5.78. And I bought a new heavy-duty reusable painting drop cloth. I'll be able to use this on many other projects moving forward. That was $10.58. All of that came to $191.98. With tax, the total came to $209.50. I didn't include the cost of that six foot ladder. It had a tag on it of $75, but I looked at my receipt and it only cost me $67.47. And then I already had a lot of white paint from other projects, so I didn't include any cost for that. I returned all the other moldings that I didn't use. So the $209 for this project I think is very reasonable. Okay, so I got my wall shelves project finished and I love the way they turned out. So they look nice and clean and I put some of my things that I would like to display on them on the shelves, but of course it's not going to stay like this for long. I'll be rearranging these items on these shelves probably at midnight tonight and you can see why I wanted white shelves so that the shelves were just plain and the things displayed on them, I wanted them to be able to be seen very easily. Okay, so I have to be honest, this was not an easy project. Working by myself, up on a ladder, above my head all the time, it was difficult. I had forgotten about that. <laughs> And I think if I were to make these same types of shelves at waist height or even down near the floor, 
this project would have been way easier and it would have gone faster too. But I had to take frequent breaks, sometimes a few days at a time, because my muscles were just not used to reaching so high above my head. And it's a good thing I bought that new six foot ladder too. Otherwise I would not have been able to paint up at the very top of the shelves and get that top strip of wood to glue it onto the ceiling and nail it into the vertical upright pieces. So like I mentioned already, working above my head on a ladder and by myself too, it dictated the design and construction of these shelves. So since I was working by myself, I couldn't make the shelf components too heavy. Otherwise I wouldn't have been able to lift them up into position and nail them into the studs. Also, the position of the studs on this 10 and a half foot wide wall dictated the design too. And I'm really happy that I chose these brackets that screwed into the studs and they can hold a lot of weight now. I'm really happy about those. Also for a project like this, you have to already know how to use a miter saw or a table saw. You have to know the techniques of applying caulking to wood. You have to have certain tools already to be able to do this. I didn't use a nail gun for any of this, but I decided to use just construction adhesives I did use a few small nails here and there. So the construction adhesive actually did work really well and the wood glues. Okay, so that will finish it up for this project. Please let me know in the comments what you thought. And until next week, thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.